But I'm going to share a quick message today. Um, we are in the Christmas season. It's very exciting. We've got a tiny little Christmas tree out here. And we have a bigger one at home, don't worry. And my cat has been, I, we have a kitten. She's actually like six or seven months. And her new favorite thing is she likes to jump in the Christmas tree. And her goal is to climb all the way to the top. And she also tries to knock over as many ornaments as possible. So that's super fun. Thank you, Marie, for doing that. But I want you guys to think about what your favorite Christmas traditions are. Think about what your favorite Christmas tr traditions are. I'm thinking about um, some of my favorites. I love drinking eggnog. Love, I love all the Christmas drinks. <clears throat> Tell me, so comment down below some of your favorite Christmas traditions. But there is one Christmas tradition that I have a, a love-hate relationship with. Okay? Oh, perfect. I have a love-hate relationship with this tradition. So, this is in, this, we didn't do this this year, but in the past, you wake up in the morning, <laughs> We go, we get peppermint mochas, you know, you got to get your coffee. It's early in the morning. We leave the house, we get on the road, and then we turn the corner, and I see it, in the green lights, it says Joann's. <laughs> and my heart drops. I'm sick to my stomach. I'm like, no, please, please, Lord, don't do this to me. Not again, not another year. We walk inside, and there's a thousand old ladies in there. I'm not exaggerating. A thousand ladies over 85 and I, I'm related to half of them, I don't know. And we're walking through, my wife is just throwing fabric into the shopping cart, it's, it's chaos. We go up to the cutting table, you pull, a, you pull a number just like at the deli, we pull it and we're number 78. Okay, not so bad, you know. And then over the loudspeaker they say, now serving number 15. And I look around and I'm like, am I seriously 60? <laughs> 60 turns away? And for the next two and a half hours, I'm just, I'm desperately searching every aisle just to stay busy. I've already finished my coffee. I'm just like, I'm like in, I'm like in my wife's purse looking for snacks. I'm starving. I'm crying. It's, uh, it's, it's a dark time. Finally, after two and a half hours, it's our turn. We get the fabric cut. Thank goodness. But now we have to get in line to check out. So after another hour, and at this point, I've lost all hope and I'm becoming desperate and it's just, it's a dark time. Finally, after another hour, we check out, we get in the car, the nightmare is over, and then my wife says, all right, next stop, Target, and then we just starts all over again. It's terrible. But, of course, I'm talking about Black Friday. Will you show that next picture? Black Friday is one of those traditions. It's kind of fun, I guess. You know, you go to the mall, try to grab some fun stuff, but also it's kind of a nightmare. It's one of those traditions that is... Sort of fun, but it's like very stressful. And I feel like there's a lot of very stressful um, Christmas traditions. And in fact, Christmas can be a very stressful time. But I want to encourage you guys in how, what kind of attitude are you entering into the Christmas season? Are you entering into the Christmas season with a stressed attitude? Or can we maybe turn our focus more on God? So I'm going to read for you. I'm going to read for you the example of a man from the Bible. I'm going to read for you a man from the Bible named Joseph. So I'm looking at Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 24. This is the example of Joseph. Will you go to the next slide, please? Okay. Perfect. So it says, This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins." All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message to the prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. So, J Joseph has this shocking news that his wife or his, his fiance is pregnant, and he's very confused. He's like, what's going on? And he has this dream from an angel and the angel instructs him to remain faithful to God and to marry uh, Mary and to become 
pretty much the stepfather of this baby who would become the king of the world. This is a huge responsibility put on Joseph's shoulders. And he had two choices in this moment. His two choices were to pack his bags and run away from all this craziness, because this is a lot to ask of a, of a young man. Or his second choice was to marry Mary and to fulfill uh, kind of his role as this surrogate father to be the, set, the, be the earthly father for this baby and to listen to God and be faithful to God and to his fiance. And Joseph was courageous and he decided to lean into God and he decided to stick around for this baby's birth and marry Mary. So really cool. Joseph is an example of someone who's faithful to God, although his circumstances were chaotic, his circumstances were crazy. And I think a lot of us can relate to these chaotic and crazy circumstances. Hopefully you don't have the same choice as Joseph because that would be kind of crazy. I doubt it because that was a once in a lifetime situation. But <laughs> we have cha crazy chaotic circumstances going into this Christmas season. And it can be hard to adjust our attitude. How are we going to enter Christmas? Are we going to have an attitude that is stressed or an attitude where we know that we are blessed? So... What I want us to do, will you go to the next slide? I want us to think about the attitude we're bringing to Christmas. Um, and one of the ways that we can adjust our attitude is in the traditions that we build. So you can't always change your attitude. Sometimes the circumstances affect you in a way that makes you feel a certain way. Maybe the stuff happening in life makes you feel bad. But you can do certain things to lift your spirits, change your attitude. And one of the traditions that I want to encourage you to include in your life and your Christmas uh, season is um, doing our Advent calendar with us as a church. So we made a really cool Advent calendar, and uh, Miss Brenda's going to come up here in a little bit and talk about that for a second. But we made this Advent calendar where each day is a short uh, passage, a few verses that you can read, and it'll tell you a little bit about the story of Jesus' birth. And over the whole month of December, you can read each passage each day leading up to the 25th, leading up to Christmas. So this is a great thing that you can include in your life, a new tradition. You can start with your family. And this tradition will help you change your attitude from stressed to one that is blessed because you'll be blessed by God. So last thing I want to show you is this verse here at the end, right here, Jeremiah 29, 13 says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. So God is inviting you to seek him this Christmas season. And one of the great ways you can do that is by...